Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to spend some time talking about eBooks, Linux, FOSS, public domain, basic stuff like that. And this is just something I've been thinking about recently. Um, not that I read a lot of eBooks. I, I'm not a huge uh, eBook reader. Uh, give me a paper book any day, really. Uh, but there are times and places that I love eBooks. One of those is if I've already read a book and I can get an eBook copy of it, it's great to have it around. Now, the flip side of this is that if those are tied to an Amazon account, they could pull those away at any point in time. Often they wouldn't delete them from your device, but if your device crashes, you get a new device, you could go to download your, your old purchased books and find that something's not there anymore. And that to me is a downside, and that's why I actually manage my own ebook library. So of course I did a video about how I built a Calibri ebook library attached to my NAS server, so I can actually go to a URL uh, from inside my network and access everything in there. I even have a cron job script that runs every 10 minutes that there's one folder that if I add a book to that folder every 10 minutes, it clears that folder, adds the book to the ebook library, and it goes ahead and deletes the, the book from that individual folder. So that means that anytime I get a copy of a book, I have it, I control it, it's not tied to somebody else's servers. Now, the downside is that in, the, in that type of world, there's not really yet a viable way to sync your bookmarks across your various devices. And this is something that a lot of people kind of want. I mean, I know I had, a, I had a, a little Dell tablet and one day it just simply stopped working. Don't know why. Um, tinkered with it all sorts of ways. Never could quite figure it out. I'm like, eh, oh well. But I used that as a little e-reader. Um, so I had some bookmarks on some various books in there. Of course, I lost all those. It's not a huge deal for me, but I would kind of love to get those, get the ability to sync all those bookmarks back. So I've been looking into those various options, and I'm kind of saddened to say that, that in the entirely free controlling your own thing, I have not yet found the viable solution. There may be some other options I'm looking into. So let's kind of start with right there. Um, if you want to sync your bookmarks, how can you do it right now? Well. There's a couple applications. The closer to open sourcey one is FB Reader. Um, FB Reader is on FDroid. It is an open source. It is a free application. I think a lot of people are starting to fork it and steer away from it because it's getting naggy. You know, every other time you turn it on, it'll be like, upgrade to premium or rate us today. And it's like, dude, I came in here to read a book, not to look at your stupid pop-ups. And so I've actually deleted that from my phone. Uh, I still have it on this tablet, so I bought this tablet just as a, as a stock tablet that I can use a Kindle, I can use a Kobu, I can do things because I am a book author and I need to make sure that the books work well on all these different devices. So that's why I have this tablet, but primarily if I'm reading something, it's probably on the phone and I use a different open source application. But FB Reader has the ability to sync. Now you only have one option, that is to lock it in with a Google account and it's going to sync with a Google account. Obviously, I don't really like to do that. I don't want Google to have a record of what I'm reading and where I'm at and things like that, even though it's managed by FB Reader, not necessarily Google. So yes, it'd be possible if someone were to be a uh, Cody guy that wants to fork that, take that and allow any type of ser server system, Google or Dropbox or Nextcloud, anything like that. That would be a good option. Now, uh, the other option is if you have uh, not as many quibbles against Amazon, even free and open source things, you could download a book from, from some source, send it to your Kindle account. Amazon still has a record of what you're reading, but you can still sync across your various devices utilizing Amazon's cloud syncing platform, which is probably the best in the industry. Other than those, um, I think maybe the iBooks also cross syncs, but I'm not completely sure. Um, I've never really, I, I test on iBooks, but I don't really read much on iBooks. So that's kind of the e-reader e portion. As far as in the Linux and free and open source world, there are a plethora of e-book readers. So if you are a reader and you don't mind the digital, Linux is a great platform for you. You can get FB Reader on your, um, on your computer, although I wouldn't recommend it for the computer tablets. 
uh, phones maybe, uh, but the computer, the FB reader application is very limited. But Calibri is absolutely the gold standard for ebook management on Linux platforms, which comes with its own ebook reader, which is a very good, respectable reader. Calibri, of course, that's what I'm using for my ebook server, will allow you to, to share books in different systems. It allows you to turn on a network share system if you want. Like I said, mine is, is always on. It's attached to my NAS, and it runs alongside my NAS platform. So I can always access the books that I have. I haven't solved that problem of syncing them yet. We're still looking into that. Um, but as far as where can you get books, if you've not heard of Project Gutenberg, um, not to be mistaken with the um, train wreck that is called Gutenberg on WordPress. Thank you, WordPress, for destroying a perfectly good platform. Um, but Project Gutenberg is a repository of public domain ebooks. That is a great place to grab any old books. So uh, a lot of the old classic books I used to have, you know, uh, Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, um, just several other things. I don't have my list in front of me right now, but those old classic books, um, I have a lot of G.K. Chesterton that I've downloaded from Project Gutenberg. Um, you can get a lot of those old classics that are in the public domain in a great ebook formats there. What I do is I grab a copy of those and save them here. I don't always rely on Project Gutenberg. The reason is because there are revisionist history guys that want to go through classic books like Huckleberry Finn and edit out all the N-words, not realizing that that was part of the culture at the time and, and one of those things that it, that is literature that we can learn from, we can grow from, and we can say, that was, that was acceptable in that culture. It's not in our culture. That doesn't mean we need to rewrite the book or burn the book. And I like having a real copy of that in my office that I know is not going to get tinkered around with before everyone gets their hands on. So in the Linux world with eBooks, you can download the books. You can manage them. In fact, there's no better personal management system than Calibri, which is a primary Linux application. Um, and then the, the ebook readers, whether you're on a, um, on a custom ROM lineage, uh, I use the simple fork of FB reader called, um, uh, I think it's just called book reader. In fact, it'll circle with a B in it. Best book reader I know of. I can download the books directly to my phone and just say, open it with book reader, automatically adds it to the library. If you're running something that's more stock like this, um, you can download FB Reader. You can probably get Book Reader. I'm not sure if it's in the App Store or not. Of course, you can get your Kindle, your Barnes & Noble, your your um, uh, whatever X name it apps, probably the Google e-reader as well. And so you can do that stuff, uh, stuff uh, in there as well. Uh, of course, on the Linux systems, there's just there's a lot of ebook readers. Um, there's even a few more simple ones. I think there's a simple one coming with GNOME now. Uh, there's actually a, a few other ones that I've looked at, and you know, there's there's some good ebook readers out there. So if you are a book reader, if you are a person that loves books, Linux has a lot of the things that you want. Um, you're going to be able to read your ebooks. You're going to be able to manage your ebook libraries. You're going to be able to keep copies of those ebooks. And even if um, uh, not every book on Amazon is DRM locked, some of them are, some of them aren't. It actually depends on the publisher and the author. My books personally, when I sell them on Amazon, they're not DRM locked, except I think India forces them to be DRM locked. Um, so everywhere where I can turn that off, um, you can. And if you're switching from Linux, you're de-Googling your life, maybe you're even de-Amazoning your life, you can actually go on and uh, get some applications to pull your books off of your Kindle device and keep a copy. Now, if they're DRM locked, they're still encrypted, that's going to be a problem. Some people allege that there's ways around that, but that's not necessarily covered under U.S. law, so um, I'm not going to recommend that you do that. Um, but you can get a copy of the books that you've bought from Amazon that are not DRM locked. You can extract them out with Calibri and keep them in your personal library. And as long as you back up that Calibri library in your backups, and your regular backups that you better be doing every month, or more frequently, you will never lose access to those ebooks. That is one of the great, the greatest areas in the Linux world right now, in the open source world right now, is what's going on with ebooks. Thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.